Hello my fellow nerds and welcome. Today we are going to talk about a theory. A theory that states that Loki did not die in Infinity War and he's actually the Incredible Hulk. Well actually, we're going to talk about why Loki is not the Incredible Hulk. There are several spoilers for, well, several movies in the MCU. So if you care about that type of thing, please bypass this video. If not, join me as we pick this theory apart. The Incredible Hulk is the black sheep of the MCU. Most people forget that it's even canon, but it is. There's one scene in that movie that we need to look at. And actually, it's the last scene of the movie. We see Bruce Banner sitting on the floor meditating. His heart monitor is beeping faster and faster. He opens up his eyes, they're radiating green, and he cracks a smile. Bruce Banner is trying to control his transformations into the Hulk, instead of just hulking out anytime things go crazy. Now flash forward, it's 2012, the Battle of New York is raging on. We watch as Bruce Banner rides his motorcycle up to the group as Iron Man baits one of the Leviathans towards the Avengers. As it approaches, Bruce starts walking towards it. He turns back to the group and says, that's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. And then we see him turn into the Hulk on purpose. Now at first glance, those two scenes don't seem all that special. But they are far more important than most people realize. This is because the theory that states that Loki is the Hulk relies on the fact that the Hulk and Banner do not share memories. Now I can tell you that that is the exception and not the rule. And I can prove this by using those two scenes and one line from Thor Ragnarok that most people have been overlooking. The whole thing is totally different this time. I mean, in the past, I always felt like Hulk and I each had a hand on the wheel. But this time, it's like he had the keys of the car and I was locked in the trunk. Interesting, right? For the last two years, it was like he was locked in a trunk. But normally, it's like they each had a hand on the wheel. And this adds up when we take a look at the entire MCU. At the end of The Incredible Hulk, it's like Bruce is finally recognizing the Hulk as its own separate entity. And by the time of Avengers, which is four years later, the Hulk and Banner share some connection. This is why Bruce states he's always angry. When we look at the different times we see the Hulk, we find that he only really comes out under two separate scenarios. The first being when Banner's in some high stress situation, like the helicarrier scene in Avengers, or the time that Scarlet Witch messed with his head. But the other scenario, it's when the Avengers need the Hulk, and Bruce just lets him out to play. Now in that second scenario, the Hulk knows that he's needed. This means that there has to be some form of internal dialogue between the two. Either that, or the Hulk can see through Bruce's eyes at least to some degree anyways. Remember that those two years on Sakaar are the exception and not the rule. Remember, the Hulk is a force, a force that wants control. And although Bruce said it's like they each had a hand on the wheel, it's more like each of them are fighting to have both hands on the wheel. So what we need to do is we need to take a step back and we need to take a look at Bruce's mindset before the Hulk took control. And what we see is that Bruce was talking with the Black Widow, the woman he had romantic feelings for. And he tells her that they should run away, that they should leave the Avengers so it could be just them. And what is her response? She pushes him off a ledge to trigger the Hulk. Bruce Banner was emotionally defeated. And in that moment, the Hulk took control, locking Bruce out. Under normal conditions, there has to be some capacity to share memories. So at the beginning of Infinity War, when Thanos is just wailing on the Hulk, I believe the Hulk is allowing Bruce to have access to those memories so that he could see what has just occurred. So when the Hulk is flying through the cosmos, Bruce is seeing everything that just happened. Then when Bruce lands in the Sanctum Santorum and states, Thanos is coming. He's coming. It makes perfect sense as to why you would have that information.
Thanos can't knock out the Hulk in just three punches. The reason why we never saw the Hulk was because if Loki hulked out, he wouldn't be doing any extra damage so people would know something was wrong. I mean, the Hulk is the strongest Avenger. I'm sorry, but he's not. This ain't the comics. The Hulk isn't capable of taking two tectonic plates that are falling apart and pulling them back together. And if you disagree with me, go back and watch the gladiatorial fight scene between Thor and the Hulk. It's definitely a close fight, don't get me wrong, but towards the end of the match, Thor is winning. This is the main reason why the Grandmaster freaks out, pushes that button, electrocutes Thor, leaving him wide open for the Hulk to jump and smash his face in. You might be thinking, this guy's an idiot. The Hulk gets stronger as he gets angrier. And to this I say, in the comics. And I do not think the MCU version of the Hulk shares this with his comic counterpart. So the Hulk and Thor would be of near equal power. The only main difference is Thor is far more intelligent. But Thor and the Hulk are both far stronger than Loki. So if the Hulk is really just Loki in disguise, then Thor should do massive amount of damage during that opening scene. Wait, he just gets knocked out by one of the Black Order? I mean, that guy's not even as strong as Thanos. This only makes sense if the Hulk is Hulk, Thor is Thor, Loki is Loki, who is dead on the floor. In all seriousness, I feel like people are missing the point of that opening scene. It is to show that Thanos is a force to be reckoned with, even without the gauntlet. He takes on and defeats the two strongest Avengers, and he does it without even breaking a sweat. It sets the tone for the rest of the film. If it turns out that Loki truly is the Hulk in disguise, then it undermines the stakes set at the beginning of Infinity War. Before I get started with this section, I just want to say that I'm a huge Super Carlin Brothers fan. What happened was I was already two-thirds of the way done with this video when they released their Pro Loki is the Hulk video. When I watched it, I saw a lot of evidence that I did not incorporate, and frankly, had nowhere to incorporate. So because of how long it takes me to put out a video, it made more sense to do a response to them instead of going back and starting over from scratch. I'll be putting a link in the description to their video. Make sure to go watch it, it is excellent, but obviously I just disagree with the theory. But with that said, let's just jump into this response. Not to mention the generally accepted reason for why the Hulk won't come out is because Thanos beat the Hulk and now he's too afraid to come out. The Russo brothers who directed the film said that they were surprised that people thought this was the explanation as to why he couldn't come out because it's not the explanation as to why he couldn't come out. And so according to Joe Russo on the commentary track for the DVD, he states that the reason the Hulk didn't come out is because he's tired of being hero to Banner. Which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. He was just on Sakaar for two years. For two years he was a champion. He was a hero. People chanted his name. He had friends. Just think Valkyrie. And now all of a sudden, he's back on Earth. He's the puppet of the Avengers. He's doing Banner's bidding. And he hates Banner. And he doesn't see the Avengers as friends. And so he only has one real option, and that is to not participate. It makes perfect sense if you think about it. Like, why is the reuniting of Natasha and Bruce just so weird? They were like in love, right? Or at the very least getting there and not even a hug? It's been two years fighting on a gladiator trash planet. So is it because it's been two years or because Loki doesn't know what's up with their backstory? Although I'll give I you this one, but in all honesty, Bruce and Natasha only really share glances in this movie. I do have one little thing of evidence that might suggest that Bruce is Bruce and not Loki though. That they never could. To me, it looks like this is Bruce and Natasha standing outside having some form of conversation. This scene was not in the film and it was not part of the deleted scenes, 
so we may never know what was said between them. But if they did shoot a scene where Bruce and Natasha were talking, to me, it sounds like that would be for some type of closure and that this would actually be Bruce we're dealing with. This scene, there's also a kind of similar situation with Suri. Why didn't you just reprogram the synapses to work collectively? Because we didn't think of it? Sure, yeah, didn't think of it. Also an acceptable answer was a fight broke out and Thor busted in and lightning was going everywhere. We didn't know what to do. And moving forward- Dude. You are totally glassing over the vision creation scene. They had such a small window of opportunity to get Jarvis in that body. They had to do it before Hawkeye knew what they were doing, and he was downstairs. Before Captain America and the twins returned. For all they knew, before Thor returned. When you're going for the fastest route possible, you're not really going for efficiency. So, yeah. It makes total sense why his response would be, we didn't think about that. And moving forward, remember again when Thanos lands in Wakanda and basically just phases the Hulkbuster suit into a rock wall. Gotta say, he looks pretty stuck. Like he is a part of that rock wall from now on and forever. Well, unless he's Loki and can literally just phase out. There's only one thing Tony Stark is good at. It's making Iron Man suits. Now the Hulk would easily be able to punch through that mountain. And if that suit can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hulk, it should easily be able to punch that mountain also. Now, I get what you're saying. It is definitely phased in there. But there's one scene I want to look at from Age of Ultron. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. In that scene... The arm is stationary, and the fist is going forwards and backwards. If he were to do that in the mountain, it would knock the rock loose. And that's just one thing the suit can do. I'm sure Tony Stark put so many different things into it so it could stop the Hulk that it can easily knock itself loose from that mountain. Like, even going back to our review, I, I think the one remark I had about the entire movie was that I thought Bruce Banner was just off the whole time. I, like, I don't know. He just seems so stressed out through the entire movie and it seems like... So yes, Bruce Banner was definitely acting off throughout the entirety of Infinity War. But let's take a look at his situation. He was basically in a coma for two years. He wakes up from it and he's on some random alien world. He then finds out that his planet, his galaxy, the entire universe is under an imminent threat. And then he finds out that some of his friends were in prison, some were on the run, he has no idea where he stands with the woman he had romantic feelings for. I mean, when you look at everything, it makes sense how he was acting. It'd be far more weird if he just thought everything was normal. Well, that's it for today. This theory is definitely an interesting one, but I do not think they'll be going this route for Avengers 4. Bruce is definitely Bruce, but Loki? He might not actually be Loki. He could be alive, he could be dead, and if he is dead, he might not be staying dead. I'll be going more in depth on this in the future. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe. I will be putting out more content on a more regular basis starting this week. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to comment down below and let's chat. I'll see you guys next time.